Good morning and welcome to this NCRT problem. Again, I am going to emphasize, I am going to first explain you the concept and then we will solve this. This question is from thermodynamics. Let's read the question, understand the question very carefully and then think what should be our strategy, right? But we must be able to understand the concepts we will apply. So my emphasis, again, I'm repeating is to tell you the concept and then solve the problem. All right. So you have a gas which is adiabatically taken from a state A to another state equilibrium B and the amount of work you do is 22.3, right? It is done on the system. The work is done on the system. If the gas is taken from state A to B via another process, okay, this is not thermodynamics. We are taking the gas again from A to B, but this time it is not adiabatic. It is a different process. In this process, the heat is absorbed by the system, which is this much. Question is how much work is done by the uh, system in the later case. Which, so, so although the you know the the way question has been articulated is not great, but I will just bifurcate. So this is what is happening. You have two processes. One is the adiabatic process, right? So this is adiabatic process. The second process is mentioned to be uh, a process, right? If you see the language being used is via a process. Uh, process. They have not given the name of the process. But what is common is the gas is taken from A to B in this process. And even in this process, the gas is taken from A to B. There is no difference when it comes to the initial state and the final state. The initial state and the final state between the... So, so the gas is now, you know, taking two different paths. The path number one is an adiabatic path. The second is not explained, it is another, right? So, same gas, you you're doing the experiment twice. Let's think. So, I hope you understand the meaning of the word adiabatic process, right? Adiabatic process is the one in which there is no heat exchange. So, we should know that this is an adiabatic process. So, Q, which is the heat exchanged either from the system or to the system from the environment is zero, right? So this is the meaning of the word adiabatic process, okay? Point number one, no heat exchange takes place. But if you look into the other process, it says that the net heat absorbed by the system is this much. But in this process, there is an addition of 9.35 calories I will just multiply this with 4.19 to calculate the joules, right? So this is difference number one, okay, on Q. The difference on Q is there is a heat added. There is absolutely no heat added. Adiabatic process happens when the system is completely insulated. It has no way to exchange heat with the environment. Make sense? All right. Let's talk about another situation, right? So, what is happening in this? In this particular case, the work done on the system, right? So, the work has been done on the system. W is equal to, if you do work on the system, you're compressing the system and therefore, the work done is negative, minus 22.3 joule, okay? Work done on the system. If you do on the system, again, sign convention, the work done on the system is negative, it compresses. Work done by the system, by the system is positive. Again, key concepts, remember this. Most of the students can get confused when solving the problem, right? Here, you have to find the work done. What is the work done in such a process? This is not an adiabatic process. The process number A is adiabatic. The process number B is not an adiabatic process. Now, 
let's apply first law of thermodynamics the overall change in internal energy is given by the heat supplied minus the work done is equal to how much heat have you supplied zero this is an adiabatic process we've already mentioned minus the work done which is minus 22.3 is equal to plus 22.3 joule what does this mean this means the work you did on the system the work done on the system as per the numerical results in increase in internal energy so i hope this is making sense if you do work on the system so this is an adiabatic process in an adiabatic process if you do work on the system on the system the internal energy goes up delta u goes up positive if you have a situation of work done by the system right if you do work by the system the internal energy reduces reduces right so you can see the internal energy in our example or the numerical has gone up because you have done work on the system the the work which you have done has resulted in increase in internal energy has resulted in increase in internal energy so this is a special case of adiabatic process where you do not add any external you know energy you do not provide a, any external energy and even then you're able to raise the or change the internal energy so you don't provide any heat to the system so q is not provided there is no q which is provided yet you are able to change the you know internal energy with the help of a mechanism called as w generally you change delta u with the help of what with the help of adding q in adiabatic process you don't do any q there is no q there is only w so w is the engine which provides the you know increase or decrease of delta u additional concept you must understand adiabatic processes have no q without even q you are able to change the internal energies using the concept of work i hope this is making sense so now let's go to this part of it in this question question number okay point number 3 what is delta u you are going to use it is very very important this is another key concept from a what have you learned that the internal energy change of the system is 22.3 joules and the system in situation number b has also moved from a to b right in both the cases you are moving from a to b right a to b a to b a to b now if a system moves from a to b a to b this is the path and this is another path i'm just giving you hypothetically path this is another path right this is path number 1 this is path number 2 this is path number 3 if this is the situation then what happens the change in internal energy is path independent if you are moving between two points a and b a and b a and b then the internal energy change in internal energy is independent of the path if you are moving between a to b whether you take this path adiabatic path you take another path or another thermodynamic process the change in internal energy remains unchanged which means the internal energy change you have seen from a to b of 22.3 joules whether you take adiabatic process or you take a process which is a situation number b remains unchanged therefore now that we understand the delta u is path independent you are actually moving in both the cases from a to b the 
change in internal energy for situation B will also be 22.3 joules. Same as adiabatic process because if you look into the formula, first law of thermodynamics, where Q is equal to change in potential energy plus the work done, these two quantities are path dependent. This is the only quantity, the change in internal energy, which is path independent, right? This is what we have done. So we have used the internal energy change from this process, adiabatic process, which we calculated. We have used it in the second process because we know the concept that delta U is path independent. Now let's apply the law of thermodynamics to the situation number two. The Q, the heat has been added to the system. So 9.35 multiplied by 4.19 is equal to 22.3 plus W and W is equal to 9.35 multiplied by 4.19 minus 22.3 you can calculate and multiply this i'm just giving an approximation 9 fours are 36 maybe this is around 37 i'm just doing an approximation minus 22.3 is equal to the answer 14.7 joule okay this is just an approximation multiplication of these two don't worry about it it may be slightly plus or minus but i hope you understood the basic concept that delta u right is path independent you must use this concept a lot in thermodynamics a situation number one is given find delta u here if the situation number two the initial and final points are same for example here it is a to b in situation number two also it is a to b but the path is different the path is different here Use this delta U in this situation if the endpoints and the final point and initial points are common because delta U is path independent. I hope this made sense to you. This is very, very important for any student who is preparing for entrance examination. You will find a lot of explanations, etc., but you will never find any anyone explaining you in detail what exactly is happening i could have given you a solution solutions don't teach you any physics it is important for you to understand this if you directly see the solutions you will not learn anything please therefore watch my channel do not miss any of the solutions which i give because i spent substantial time in explaining the concept i hope you enjoyed this video if you did subscribe to my channel do not miss any of my videos any of my solutions because this is the only channel which is giving explanation and ensuring that you never forget the concept all your life. Thank you very much for your time and wait for my next video. Thank you.